Find the exact value of each trigonometric ratio. In part A, we'll find the exact value of cosecant negative 9 pi over 2. The first thing we need to do is find the principal angle. In method 1, we'll estimate the principal angle using revolutions. Convert negative 9 pi over 2 to revolutions. This gives us negative 2.25 revolutions. Convert the decimal portion, negative 0.25, to a degree. This gives us negative 90 degrees. Find the principal angle. Add 360 degrees to negative 90 degrees to get 270 degrees. Since the original angle was in radians, convert the principal angle to radians. This gives us 3 pi over 2. In method 2, we'll find the principal angle by splitting the fraction. We need to make two fractions. The first fraction must yield a multiple of 2 pi. The second fraction is the remainder. Begin with the original angle, negative 9 pi over 2. Split the fraction into negative 8 pi over 2 and negative pi over 2. This gives us negative 4 pi minus pi over 2. Negative 4 pi means we have two complete rotations clockwise, returning the terminal arm to the positive x-axis. There is then an additional rotation of pi over 2 radians clockwise. Now find the principal angle. Add 2 pi to negative pi over 2 to get the principal angle. Get a common denominator. The principal angle is 3 pi over 2. This is the same result we obtained using method 1. Rewrite the original question using the principal angle. Cosecant negative 9 pi over 2 is equivalent to cosecant 3 pi over 2. Cosecant 3 pi over 2 is equal to 1 over sine of 3 pi over 2. The sine of 3 pi over 2 is equal to negative 1. The exact value of cosecant 3 pi over 2 is negative 1. In part b, we'll find the exact value of negative 10 squared 617 pi over 6. The first thing we need to do is find the principal angle. In method 1, we'll estimate the principal angle using revolutions. Convert 617 pi over 6 to revolutions. This gives us approximately 51.41667 revolutions. Convert the decimal portion, 0 0.41667, to a degree. This gives us approximately 150 degrees. Since the original angle was in radians, Convert the principal angle to radians. 150 degrees is the same as 5 pi over 6 radians. In method 2, we'll find the principal angle by splitting the fraction. We need to make two fractions. The first fraction must yield a multiple of 2 pi. The second fraction is the remainder. Begin with the original angle, 617 pi over 6.
Split the fraction into 612 pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6. This gives us 102 pi plus 5 pi over 6. One hundred two pi means we have fifty one complete rotations counterclockwise, returning the terminal arm to the positive x axis. There is then an additional rotation of five pi over six radians counterclockwise. The principal angle is five pi over six radians. Rewrite the original question using the principal angle. Negative tan squared six hundred seventeen pi over six is equivalent to negative tan squared five pi over six. Tan 5 pi over 6 is equal to sine 5 pi over 6 over cosine 5 pi over 6. Don't forget to square the fraction and to carry the negative on the outside. The sine of 5 pi over 6 is 1 half, and the cosine of 5 pi over 6 is negative root 3 over 2. Multiply the numerator by the reciprocal of the denominator. Simplify. Square the fraction and multiply by the negative outside the brackets to get negative 1 over 3. This is the exact value answer. In part C, we'll find the exact value of secant 61 pi over 2. The first thing we need to do is find the principal angle. In method 1, we'll estimate the principal angle using revolutions. Convert 61 pi over 2 to revolutions. This gives us 15.25 revolutions. Convert the decimal portion, 0 0.25, to a degree. This gives us 90 degrees. Since the original angle was in radians, convert the principal angle to radians. This gives us pi over 2. In method 2, we'll find the principal angle by splitting the fraction. We need to make two fractions. The first fraction must yield a multiple of 2 pi. The second fraction is the remainder. Begin with the original angle, 61 pi over 2. Split the fraction into 60 pi over 2 and pi over 2. This gives us 30 pi plus pi over 2. Thirty pi means we have fifteen complete rotations counterclockwise, returning the terminal arm to the positive x-axis. There is then an additional rotation of pi over two radians counterclockwise. The principal angle is pi over two. Rewrite the original question using the principal angle. Secant of sixty-one pi over two is equal to secant pi over two. Secant pi over 2 is equal to 1 over cos pi over 2. The cosine of pi over 2 is equal to 0. It's not possible to divide by 0, so secant pi over 2 is undefined. In part D, evaluate cotan of negative 1980 degrees. The first thing we need to do is find the principal angle. In method 1, we'll estimate the principal angle using revolutions. Convert negative 1980 degrees to revolutions. 
This gives us negative 5.5 revolutions. Convert the decimal portion, negative 0.5, to a degree. This gives us negative 180 degrees. Find the principal angle. Add 360 degrees to negative 180 degrees to get 180 degrees. In method 2, we'll find the principal angle by splitting the degree. Write negative 1980 degrees as a sum where one of the terms is a multiple of 360 degrees. This gives us negative 5 times 360 degrees minus 180 degrees. Negative 5 times 360 degrees means we have 5 complete rotations clockwise, returning the terminal arm to the positive x-axis. There is then an additional rotation of 180 degrees clockwise. Find the principal angle corresponding to negative 180 degrees. Negative 180 degrees plus 360 degrees is equal to 180 degrees. We write the original question using the principal angle. The cotan of negative 1980 degrees is equal to the cotan of 180 degrees. Rewrite the cotan of 180 degrees as cos 180 degrees over sine 180 degrees. The cosine of 180 degrees is negative 1, and the sine of 180 degrees is 0. We can't divide by 0, so the cotan of 180 degrees is undefined.